Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to set up a Plex media server on your Synology DS220 Plus. Now, a few disclaimers straight away off the bat. First and foremost, I am well aware that that CPU at the bottom right of the screen is going crazy. The reason being is that I've only had this device up and running for a few hours. And at the moment, I am not only uploading quite a lot of 1080p and 4K media for the Plex testing in my next video, but also lots of photos. Photos. And with the thumbnails being created as well as a lot of the background information and Synology Moments and its AI powered uh, back end, the result is that that CPU and 2 gig of memory is being pushed to the wall somewhat. So do try to ignore the fact that CPU is quite high here, but it's only because of all of the metadata creation and thumbnails and other background stuff that's happening there in the background. I could skip it, but I've got lots of stuff to do. And if anything, it's going to show a little more of goodness how well this device is going to run, even with that utilization that high. But there will be lots of transcoding being done of 1080p and 4K files uh, in a future video. But for now, let's get into this. The next disclaimer is that all the steps we're going to go through today can largely be applied to any Synology now. So although this video may or may not be titled the DS220 Plus Plex installation, I will say that these steps can be followed by pretty much any Synology now. So the last thing, I apologize in advance if the sound quality seems a little bit tinny there at the top. I am not recording my usual location with this video being recorded during COVID and self-isolation. So there's lots of compromises that have had to be made and I'm in quite a noisy location right now. So I'm trying to slice off a lot of the noise there on the edge, as you can see on the audio bar there of OBS running in the background, but that's enough disclaimers. Um, also, I'm running in incognito to try and remove any windows or logins that have already happened previously, but let's get to it. First thing we need to do is head to the package center. The package center up there is where we've got all of our apps, both Synology and third party. And I've already installed a bunch of apps there in the background, but the one we want is right here at the bottom. We could have searched for it, but it's better to scroll Plex Media Server. This app we're going to install, but it's also worth highlighting, and I'm gonna click install now, that the version of Plex Media Server that arrives um, with not just Synology, but QNAP and Acer Store as well, is not the most recent version of Plex Media Server. They have updated it, uh, and last year I did touch on this in another video, but Plex on this device is actually version 1.18, and the latest version I believe is 1.19. And during this video, I will show you guys how to upgrade uh, your version of Plex Media Server to the latest version. Um, I'll also show you guys how to assign folders as well as how to get it to scrape metadata for those folders. I will be using my own um, Plex Media Server account and it is a Plex pass, so we've got transcoding options. And I'll hopefully be able to show you guys how to adjust those Plex transcoding options too. I'm going to leave real transcoding and performance benchmarks for this NAS, as well as the DS720, 920, and 420 Plex testing. We will be doing very, very soon for another video. But what I'm going to do now is fast forward um, uh, further along to the completion of the download and installation of Plex Media Server. Now that Plex has been installed, we can go ahead and load up the Plex Media Server application. But before I do it, it's worth highlighting a couple of things. One, if you are an already an existing Plex Media Server user, chances are on your device you'll already be logged in. Or if you're transferring your Plex Media Server um, account and media from an old NAS to a newer NAS, chances are the screen you're going to see is a pre-logged in window. For those that are doing this for the first time, the next few couple of steps may not be for you, but I recommend you watch them anyway. If you're an existing Plex Media Server user, click that button and then what will happen is the NAS will open up and it will ask you to log in to your Plex device, which I've done. Once you log in, this is a screen that will greet you. If you've already got preset plugins or live DVR stuff or any of the web show series, they will appear on screen. But the thing I want you to pay serious attention to is here at the top. 
this version because this shows that the version of Plex Media Server on your NAS is out of date. Now, if you are a new user of a Synology NAS, you can download this directly from the Plex Media Server app. But after you've logged in and created your NAS, later on you'll be able to download this. So whether you do this now or later, it doesn't make a difference. But when you do, just click that download there button and it will go straight into your downloads folder. Then head back into your Synology NAS. From there, go into the App Center or the Package Center and then go up to Manual Install. Now, when you do this for the first time, you may not have enabled third-party application installation. When you click Browse, find the file in question on your NAS, in which case I found it there, my Plex Media Server app, that I've downloaded version 1.19. Remember that we only had 1.18 on the Synology NAS. Click Next, and it will begin the update of Plex on this NAS and this will convert the Plex Media Server application on your Synology NAS to a much more recent version with all of the extras that are included inside. Remember, you don't have to do this right now. Click yes there. You don't have to do this immediately. You can do this update at any time. I just recommend that you might as well do it early doors to make sure you get things done. Remember, if you're logging into this NAS and you have never used Plex before, chances are you'll want to download this early. Just head straight to the Plex Media Server website and look up the Synology supported versions in their download area. And you can download this version of Plex directly from there. The update of this application may take a little bit of extra time based on the power of your NAS and your internet connection. Although my internet connections are not too shabby where I am right now, I am still utilizing a lot of my hardware assets there in the background with thumbnail generation, uh, video transcoding generation and stuff like that, that I'm running for other videos. But for now, it looks like the application has finished its installation and Plex Media Server will need to be restarted, which it will do in the background. If I scroll down and now reopen that Plex Media Server tab, if we look in here, we can see we're now updated to version 1.19. Let's click open. We can see now the Plex user interface loading, but as mentioned before, the version of Plex Media Server and the screen that you're looking at will differ slightly if you've never logged into Plex before. Now, if you're new to Plex and you're logging in for the very first time, chances are the screen that you'll see looks something like this. We go into the um, account, we then scroll down into libraries, and they go to add library. The screen that you'll see if you've never created a Plex Media Server account till now is this. This is where we assign the different kinds of multimedia on our Plex server. And this is where Plex will crawl and index from the NAS for multimedia. Say for example, music. We select the music icon. We then click next. And then we browse the folders on our NAS to find that directory. Most of the time, if you're using the default settings, it will be inside whatever the name of the volume that you created right at the beginning. Scroll down and find the folder that you put your music into, which I did here, and then click Add. From here, this folder has now been added, and we can add that library, and it will start indexing and searching the music in that folder. But why not add some more folders too? So say Photos, for example. Find where on the NAS that you placed your photos. In my case, the folder marked photos. I know it's not rocket science. And then add library. And you can do the same again for movies and films. I did combine TV shows and movies on mine. So this may um, overlap for you guys when it gets done. But as you can see there, we've now got films, music and photo folders listed as libraries. We then scan those library files. Now, if we go back to our dashboard, we can take a good look at the files available to us on this NAS. If you're setting up a Plex Media Server for the very first time, then chances are this is the screen that you're going to see. This is the screen that people that haven't created a Plex Media Server pass until now or have never exported their Plex Media Server library from another NAS. So in other words, you're a Plex noob for NAS, whether you've just created the account or using a pre-existing one. So once you've logged into the NAS on your IP, 
look at the options there and then click got it. The next thing it's going to ask you to do is set up your library and ask the Plex Media Server account and a server NAS to communicate where your multimedia lives inside your NAS. This can take anywhere up to a couple of minutes and the first thing it will do is ask you the name of your NAS server. You can allow it to access the multimedia outside of your home network environment and from here it will then ask you to enable and select your multimedia library where your TV shows live, your movies live, your box sets, your music, your photos, your home movie collection and more. All the while with Plex scraping that lovely metadata in the background. Let's fast forward to the completion of the server naming setup. Now we need to organize our library. So for here, we click add library. First thing we want to do is select a directory where our films will live. Select films and then go to add folders and browse the media folders on the NAS in question. Generally, you'll find them within the folder marked volume. And from here, select the files, folders and configurations that you need. Now, it's worth highlighting that sometimes you won't see the files and folders in question that you need to access. So what you need to do is head back into the Synology main menu and give the Plex Media Server access to these directories. Head back into your Synology NAS and head over to the control panel, then select user. From the users, you'll find a new account listed as Plex. This is the means with which the Plex Media Server application can access certain folders. From here, click edit and go into permissions. Grant them access to the folders that you want it to have access to. In my case, I'd like this to have access to all of these files and folders. Then click OK. On top of that, you can also enable connected applications that are able to utilize the Plex Media Server, such as certain add-ons and plugins, to have access to your Plex Media Server. Bear in mind that some of these you may not wish to cross over, although some of them, like Video Station and Audio Station, do have their own advantages. So from there, click OK if you want to enable application access. Now, if you head back over to the Plex Media Server and restart what you're doing, so to browse for media folders, select volume, and now you'll be able to see far, far more directories. In this case, I'm going to select my movies folder, and from there, click add. After that, you'll add that multimedia library, and that's films, and you can add even more libraries as you go. After that, click next. From there, you can install individual Plex apps if you want, and if you're a Plex pass holder, you may see advantages in this. But otherwise, click next for done. Next, it will ask you if you have multiple servers listed, which one is your preferred server. From there, it will make sure that your home screen has access to that NAS, but you can also flick between them. As you can see, the earlier testing that we've been doing, setting up the DS220 Plus is visible, but also our new NAS to show you guys what a completely fresh Plex install looks like is available. From there, we're gonna make sure we use the DS220 Plus going forward to finish this video. From there, it will also ask the navigation of what folders you want to be displayed on your Plex Media Server user interface, and from there, click Finish Setup. And the entire catalogue of your NAS available on your Plex Media Server will be displayed. Bear in mind that there are different connections, and as you can see here, I've got shared connections on my network with priority given to this pre-established NAS. You won't see this screen here unless your network connection is by default quite weak. As you can see, we can flick between the two NASs quite easily by going into the More settings and selecting the other NAS. On top of that, we can look at the existing DS220 Plus NAS and from here, browse the contents of the NAS that we've set up for the other part of this video. So the 220 NAS, and as you can see, these are some of the files that we'll be using on our Plex tests in our next video for testing 1080p and 4K. And there you go. We can see here that in the background, the metadata has already started to be scraped. Now, this may take a great deal of time depending on your own number of files and just how much metadata there is out there in terms of thumbnails, descriptions of cast, trailers and more are available. Generally, when it's done, however, you'll be able to look at any of these files and you'll get lots of information about what the episode might be about in the case of this episode of Father Ted, the picture quality, and lots of information about the casting. 
If you're worried that you don't have all the metadata to hand, you can always right click up here and then scan the media libraries and scan freshly scan the libraries as well as search for more metadata as it becomes available. You can even reconfigure the number of different sources the data can come from in the settings menu at the top. Clicking and playing files is quite straightforward just by clicking here, but obviously for YouTube reasons and copyright, I'm not able to play some of these files. I will be doing a performance test of the DS220 Plus shortly, and hopefully talking you guys through exactly what this device can and can't do. I'm also looking forward to looking at the brand new photo support with Plex Media Server, where I'm seeing lots of facial recognition and more becoming available on Plex Media Server, along with obviously music playback and the testing of all of these hardcore 4K and 1080p files, all the way up to 400 megabyte, uh, megabit bit rate even. But I'm going to wrap things up here. We're going to continue our look at all the things we can do with Synology NAS, not just the DS220 Plus, but more. And otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sorry about the sporadic sound quality. It has been filmed in three different locations. And whether you're looking at a brand new NAS or a second NAS, I hope this guide has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you did enjoy it. Click subscribe to learn more. Stay tuned for more parts in this guide.